Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to update your modded Nexus 6P to the latest version of the Android 8.1 developer preview. Now if you have any mods like the Pixel mod, uh, they may not work with the 8.1 preview unless you can find one that is made from the 8.1 preview and kind of the same build that we're on as well. So you may have to forego that, but um, let's do it anyway. So we're going to be using Magisk to reroute this device. If you're using SuperSU, just download the latest version of the SuperSU zip um, and copy that and use that instead of Magisk. So we're going to be using Fastboot to do this. So this will require a computer. You can probably do it using FlashWire, but I think I'll cover it during or using Fastboot. So uh, let's get started. So first off, we need to go and download a few things on our computer. Most notably, we want to download the SDK platform tools here, standalone, for the operating system that you're on. So if you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux, just download the correct one for yourself. Just click on the one, check the terms and conditions, and then download the platform tools. Next up, you'll need to download the Android 8.1 developer preview factory image for your device. So I'll have the downloads page linked down below. And all you have to do is scroll down and download the one for your device here. So in this case, it's the Nexus 6P. And then check and agree, and then download using that blue button. Last but not least, you're going to want to download the latest version of Magisk, either Magisk itself, or you can use SuperSU or any other root management app that you like, and um, download that as well. So you'll end up with about three files like this, and basically your phone that's plugged in. I'll also assume that you have your drivers installed already, so if you're on a new computer, or you're not too sure, uh, you can double check anyway later on, but um, I assume that you have drivers ready and already installed. So once that's done, and you have all these files out here, we'll, we're going to need to do some extracting right now. So what we want to do is open up the platform tools zip folder, zip file, open up the platform tools folder, and then we want to extract fastboot.exe, the libwinpthread1.dll, just those two. Once you've got that done, you can close the platform tools zip file. Now we don't extract the ADB files uh, or DLLs as we won't be using ADB. Um, so we can keep things a little bit more simple. Next up, we want to open up the factory image and this is where we start extracting stuff. So open up this folder and you want to extract the bootloader and radio images outside, just like that. And then what you want to do next is open up the image zip file here inside the factory image. Give this a couple of seconds to extract itself as it is quite big. Alrighty, once that's done, we're going to extract the brute, system, and vendor images outside just like that. Once we have everything extracted, we're going to reboot our phone into the bootloader. So to do that, let's head back over to our phone. I'm going to disconnect the USB cable from it, just so it's a little less hassle getting it into the bootloader. We're going to power off the device. Once the phone is powered off, hold the power and volume down buttons together. Okay, now you want to plug back in your USB cable and your phone should detect, sorry, your computer should detect your phone. And with that, we're going to do a couple things. We can close the factory image folder or zip file and this one as well. So we have these over here. Up next, we're going to open up a command prompt window or a PowerShell window in the same directory where our fastboot exe and the dll is. So we're going to hold shift and right click in the empty space on windows and without anything selected and we're going to click either open command window here or open powershell window here depending on which operating system you're on. So this is what uh, we'll need to do. First up we want to type in fastboot devices so we can check if our device is properly connected to our computer in the bootloader mode. we we'll type in fastboot devices, hit enter and you can see our serial number and that means our phone is connected in the fast boot mode. Next up, we're going to start by flashing the bootloader image. Make sure that is updated. So we type in fast boot flash bootloader. Leave a space on the end and then drag in the bootloader image. All right, next up, we're going to reboot our phone back into the bootloader. So we're going to type in fast boot reboot dash bootloader, like so. I'm going to wait for our phone to boot back into the bootloader. Once that's done, we're going to flash the radio image. So we'll type in fastboot flash radio. Leave a space in the end and drag in the radio image. Hit enter. Once that is done, we're going to start by flashing the boot image. So we'll type in fastboot 
slash boot, leave a space in the end, and drag in our boot image. And then we're going to flash the system image, the largest one. So we're going to type in flash boot, flash system, leave a space in the end, and drag in the system image, and hit enter. This will take a while, roughly maybe less than a minute. So I'm going to fast forward this until this is finished. Okay, so now that's done, we're going to flash the vendor image like you last. So we'll type in fast boot flash vendor, leave a space in the end and drag in our vendor image. Okay, so we're done now. What we need to do next is reboot back into TWRP and recovery and flash the Magisk zip file or SuperSU zip file depending on which root method you want. So I'm going to go down to recovery mode, hit the power button to select that. Now I think I may have forgotten to mention that you would have wanted to copy the Magisk zip file or SuperSU zip file onto your phone. So um, you can do that now in TWRP when your phone boots into it and you decrypt your data partition because you can access your phone mm -hmm. via MTP when your phone is like this. Um, otherwise you can use ADB to sideload it, but luckily I have it on my phone. So we can swipe here to allow modifications, doesn't really matter. And we can tap on install, locate the zip file that we need to flash, and flash that. And hopefully this goes through alright, as it should. Okay, so we're done now. I'm going to tap on reboot, and then I will not install this. And we're going to boot up into the Android 8.1 Oreo beta. So this may take a while since it's a new or incremental version by a little bit more than just our average security updates. So this may take a little bit longer, but don't worry. Just leave it there for a few minutes, if not longer, for it to boot up. So I'll fast forward this until we get into Android, and maybe we'll see some of the beta stuff. Okay, so we're now booted up, and you can see that we are in the Android beta program. So uh, let's see. I don't really see much that has changed, but uh, oh, we get a new Android system logo instead of the layered O circles. And also, um, we should be able to get that new music player UI where it's colored on 8.1, at least on our devices here. And also, you can kind of see how the icons at the top here, left and right, they kind of pushed in a little bit and that is actually to accommodate the rounded corners on the Pixel 2 XL though unnecessary on our square devices so let's just have a quick look I guess at the what do you call system and I think the settings has changed as well so more reflecting like the ones on the Pixel and also of course 8.1 see we're on 8.1 here and the build number is the same one from the factory image page you can see a little few few UI tweaks, I guess, here and there, and relocations and all that for menu items. But otherwise, uh, this is pretty good. So let's just have a quick look at Magisk to see that we're still rooted, and uh, and we are. See if safety net still bypasses or passes, and yes, okay. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for some future videos with the Pixel 2, and of course the Galaxy S8 Plus, which I have some things in mind for, as well as the Nexus XP. So thanks for watching guys, and as always, happy flashing.